Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to talk about few tips that will help us in improving the performance of our Spark jobs. So the, without any further delay, let's see what do we have at point number one. It says that always use data frame over RDDs. So remember that RDDs always creates performance issues in Spark because whenever you use RDDs, RDDs, uh, Spark in general, it will have to serialize and deserialize the data when it is distributed across the cluster in case of RDDs. Hence, it tries to delay your Spark jobs. But in case of data frames, since they have JVM since they by default they have JVM structure there is no need for serialization and deserialization of data when you are using data frames so hence they are very good in terms of performance so always try and avoid RDDs wherever you can so let's see what do we have a point number two point number two says that cache data in memory try caching the data in memory wherever possible so if you have a data frame which you know that would be used across your whole code again and again do go ahead and cache that particular data frame you can cache it using data frame dot cache or you can also use spark catalog dot cache table to cache a particular spark table also remember that whenever you are caching the data in memory it gets stored in columnar format so what happens is when you are trying to read that particular data frame again right now since it is a columnar format it will automatically scan only the required columns so hence it will help you to improve the performance right and also it tries to compress the data so whenever you are trying to cache the data right so two features or the two configurations get uh, automatically enabled whenever you try to cache the data. The first one is your in-memory columnar storage dot compressed by default moment you cache the data right the moment you cache the data frame this particular configuration is enabled it tries to compress the data in the memory when it is trying to store it in the columnar format. Also what is the size right that would be stored what is the batch size Right, so that configuration is also automatically enabled by default. Whenever you're trying to cache the data, you can go ahead and change this as well. So when you try to cache the data, it is very uh, helpful in improving the performance. And whenever you want to remove the table from the memory, right? Uh, in that case, you can simply use data frame dot unpersist, or you can also use spark catalog dot uncache table with the table name. So these two uh, ways will help you to uncache the data or relieve the table from the memory. So do uh, remember that caching is really helpful in case you have to improve the performance. Then the third point comes here is used use serialized data formats. Now remember that with the variety and the volume of the data that we have, right? Most of the organizations, they are now focusing on the Avro and Parquet formats. Why? Because these are the serialized data format. They compress the data. They store it in a columnar or a row-based format. I will make a video on columnar and row-based format separately. But the serialized data formats such as Avro or Parquet, they are much more efficient while uh, you know, initiating any kinds of reads or writes on your data. They are very efficient because they store the data in a compressed format in, uh, you know, your columnar structure or even your row based structure than your traditional formats of text, CSV and JSON, which are very inefficient to process. Now the fourth function, uh, the fourth point is avoid using user defined, user defined functions. Now, this is a very general statement because user defined statements are user defined functions are very imperformant. So always try and use your spark inbuilt function. So let's say you want to do concatenation. Don't go ahead and try, create a user defined function for concatenating, right? Use the inbuilt spark function, which is built for concatenation. Why? Because whenever you try to create a UDF, it is created in Python or it is created in Scala. Right now, this is a separate topic that uh, Python UDFs are faster or Scala UDFs are faster. I will cover it in a separate uh, 
video but in general user defined functions are slower and always try to use built in functions user defined functions they are created either in scala or they they are created in python right now whenever you write a udf and spark tries to do an optimization it is not able to do the optimization Cat catalyst optimizer in the spark that doesn't know you know what udf it is it 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 in case of python it can't run it directly on the uh, jvm it actually has to connect to the uh, python and then run your udf so that is the reason udf you know they are very imperformant i will cover it in a detailed way in a separate video do go ahead and watch this if you want to understand it in detail so whenever there is a case of udf try and check whether you have a spark inbuilt function for that or not if yes go ahead and use that if you cannot use it right and you have to go for udfs right there might be the cases where you have to you, you have no choice you can use udf now in that case you know uh, your pandas udfs are better than your python udfs you know similarly your scala udfs are better than your uh, pandas udf so these are the small things which we are going to cover in the even in the next uh, video so for now remember that udfs try to avoid as much as you can now the fifth point is the join strategy hints for the sequel now for uh, the join strategies in spark i have already created a video i will leave this link in the description box in case you are not aware what are these join strategies in spark right now uh, the fifth point is basically try to use as many join strategy hints for your sql queries as you can but remember that you can uh, use join strategy hints only if you are very well aware of uh, your code right only when you are very well aware of what uh, you know the what you are trying to achieve you should understand it and then only you can provide a specific join strategy hint which will in turn help you increase the performance right it helps your query optimizer so even if your query optimizer is trying to choose broadcast right it is trying to use your broadcast join strategy and if you have put shuffle merge and you feel that okay this is my code i understand it better and shuffle merge is going to help right only then go ahead and use the join strategy right join strategy hints right and how to use it i have shown over here spark.sql spark.table you know all this is how you can uh, you know provide the hint simply use dot hint keyword so in this hint you know it is simply uh, you know putting the hint that okay go ahead and use the broadcast right even if you have any default setting it will override that and whenever it is trying to join it will just going to use the broadcast join only right so remember that join strategies are also very helpful but you should understand when to use it and if you understand your code well you understand okay broadcast doesn't work well with your join you can you and you are very 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 confident that okay shuffle merge is going to uh, be very useful over here that is when you can go ahead and override the default join strategy it will also help you in increasing the uh, you know uh, the performance a lot okay the sixth point now is colace hint for your sql query so these are very much similar to your repartitioning and colace for repartitioning and colace also have created a video you can go ahead and watch it i'll leave the link in description box so remember that colace hints in the spark sql also helps you basically to control the number of output files just like you do it in colace and repartition right so colace hint uh colace repartition colace re, uh, part, uh, repartition by range rebalance all these are very useful in your uh, spark when you are trying to reduce the number of output files and this is the basic syntax where you can use colace hints directly in the sql queries as well so these are also very helpful it will help you to reduce the number of output files and then the seventh point is adaptive query execution now remember that this adaptive query execution is by default enabled in spark 3.2 so it is already there but still it helps you uh, you know it the spark has created this feature it automatically helps you to optimize your uh, code to optimize your sql spark sql basically it tries to optimize it by default right it is enabled right it is enabled by default but you can turn it off 
right from spark 3.2 it is enabled by default but if you want to disable it you can disable it as well you can spark.sql.adaptive.enabled right you can turn off this particular setting as well so this helps you in a lot of different ways for example coalescing uh, post shuffle partition so uh, just because this ADE is enabled, what it helps us in doing is, so whenever you are doing the shuffle and you have a coalesce as well, your query execution plan will actually help you in the way that it will do the shuffle first and then it will do the coalesce and hence it will help you to even increase the performance. So this is how you can actually uh, take benefit of ADE. Now this is by default, it is, uh, you know, enabled. Right, but you should know that that this ADE comes with these features. Now, similarly, you know, even in this ADE, there are multiple properties which are enabled by default. So you can go ahead at the Spark page, you can see all these um, property names. So how many partitions it will create, things like that. It comes under Spark.sql.adaptive because it is adaptive query execution and it is enabled by default. You can always go ahead and check these out. Similarly, what it will help you do, uh, to do is, so instead of sort merge join, right, it will always help you in converting your sort merge join to the broadcast or shuffle hash join as well. So now this is again a feature of ADE, which is enabled by default. Now, similarly, now remember that sort merge broadcast shuffle hash, I've already explained in my previous video. So I do recommend watching that particular video because that is when you're going to understand what I'm talking here right if i start uh, talking about sort much broadcast shuffle has joined over here it will be a like really long video now similarly your ade also helps to optimize the data skewness right so whenever you are having data skewness your ade your adaptive query execution actually helps you in optimizing the skewed joins so basically, if you even look at what I've written over here, I've tried to capture all the points in the PPTs itself. So even this optimizing SKU join, it helps you to handle skewness in sort merge join, right? By, by splitting the SKU task into roughly even the sized tasks. So these are the performances, performance uh, consideration that even you get by default from uh, you know the Spark itself using your adaptive query execution. Now remember that there are other uh, features as well. There are definitely other features as well, which you can take care from your side, which is choose your right cluster configuration, which is that which is very important in case you want to, uh, you know, make sure that you have the right number of machine, you have the right, uh, uh, you know, you have the you have chosen the right machine, you have chosen the right number of executor, what type of executor you are choosing as per your job, right? So. Those details I have already covered in my previous video. I will leave the link in the description box for choosing the right cluster configuration. Now, similarly, you can also go ahead with the data optimization techniques. You should partition your data when you're trying, when you're trying to write the data, which is going to be read, right? So correctly partitioning your data is very important. Regarding partitioning also, I have made, the, made videos. I'll again leave the link in the description box. And then the 10th option is file management option. So Z ordering and compacting, which I have already explained. Now the Z ordering and compact, compacting, they actually work on your parquet file. So let's say um, uh, your, your parquet compressed files, Z ordering and compacting, they are very helpful in, uh, you know, co-locating the data together so that when you read the data, right, the reads are very faster. So, even for this, I have already explained because most of these things I have already explained. But here, I'm just trying to cover everything under a single umbrella, under a single video so that uh, it sets up correctly in your brain. So thank you so much for being till here and do remember to like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you so much.